My background is in um, oil paint. I started painting when I was in undergraduate school uh, at a small liberal arts college called Colby College up in Maine. Uh, I grew up and I was born, raised, and grew up all in Maine, so I transitioned to undergrad right in, in my home state. Uh, that's when I was introduced after an art foundations course to a painting one course, uh, where I actually absolutely fell in love with the medium. I uh, was taught very much in color interaction and color theory, uh, specifically the teachings of Joseph Albers. My professor was very interested in that and she definitely uh, passed that along to us. Uh, so you'll see that in a lot of my work. The pieces that I'm showing in Frank are from a collection that I've called Maine, New York, North Carolina. And it really describes the process from moving to different spaces and being who I am in those different spaces. Um, so it starts um, with my time in Maine, very much using materials uh, from Maine. So there's uh, deconstructed pine cones that I've used, um, as well as uh, seashells from a specific island in Maine that my family visits every summer. Um, so it's two very uh, personal places uh, are the origins of the collection. And then it progresses um, down the line from a place of very much Maineness um, and then more Maineness into starting to speak about North Carolina, the commonalities of North Carolina and Maine, um, which are definitely the pine trees are in both states, which is very lovely. Um, and then the, the, the flowers and the flora that I was drawn to in Maine are, are very similar to the ones you find in North Carolina. Um, and then when we go further into the collection, we see uh, I was living in New York for a while, so I was really influenced to use nature in my pieces because coming from Maine and then going into a space like New York, you really don't see nature or interact with it on a meaningful basis at, at, in any sort of way. Um, so I was really wanting to utilize nature um, and speak to that. And, and New York is also very wasteful, and I found myself being very wasteful in New York and using an excessive amount of plastic which is how I ran into using resin, because uh, I think it speaks volumes to just how uh, uh, greedy we can be <laughs> as, as, as Americans. Um, so the interaction of nature and plastic was very interesting to me. Uh, and then when I actually moved to North Carolina, I had never lived in the South before, so the things that were fascinating to me were more to do with race than anything else. So I transitioned away from using uh, this interaction of nature and plastic into trying to speak directly to my experience with race and um, just the tension that you feel here, um, especially in this climate. Um, and I made this collection actually in, in 2019, which is before um, this most current wave of the BLM movement. Um, but I still think that it speaks to the same, uh, from the same place. So how my work naturally evolves I don't necessarily have an end image in mind. I, I can try to have as many guidelines as I possibly can, uh, but in the end, I, I try to open myself up to the possibilities as the work is being created. Um, so for these pieces specifically, I had the concept of splitting up the panels um, in a very specific place uh, based off the Fibonacci sequence so that the composition would be very satisfying when you look at it. Um, so that was something I already figured out. Uh, I already figured out that I knew exactly what the dimensions I wanted were. Um, but other than that, other things that I planned out ahead of time are the color interactions, so I knew generally what kind of colors and what kind of materials I wanted. Uh, but then as I was creating the pieces, which there are uh, 12 in total, so as I was getting to like the sixth or seventh, I was running out of materials, so I had to find materials in nature, and that's when I actually came across some of the more um, found object materials. Specifically, um, this piece, I found these fanny packs while I was going on a beach trip to South Carolina, um, and I have never been in South Carolina. There's a wonderful uh, tourist attraction that's uh, pretty horrible, but also hilariously American, um, called uh, South of the Border, and it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. You just definitely have to, to go to really experience it. I, I will say it's racially insensitive to say uh, that mildly. Uh, and I want, I, there's this very specific section of South of Border um, known as the Africa Shop. 
and I was absolutely fascinated uh, about this commodification of an entire continent and uh, in its place in, in, in the south of America. Uh, so I, I, these pieces, uh, not surprisingly, all these fanny packs were on clearance, so I bought most of their stock immediately as soon as I saw them, uh, knowing that I would use them in, in one of my pieces. My favorite piece among all of these, this collection, is actually this, um, this piece right here with the fanny packs. I think it speaks uh, volumes to our current climate in terms of uh, how we've been addressing history and trying to brush certain things under the rug, but you can still see moments of it in, in, in current culture, and, and, and this is just a great reminder of that. And I paired it with um, the bottom half, which I, are, are actually, those are uh, dreadlocks, which came from my head when, when I, I went through a phase of uh, having uh, dreadlocks. And growing up, I actually uh, developed dreadlocks naturally a couple times in my life through a technique that I later found is literally just neglect, um, which, uh, which I find hilarious. Um, and then I purposely did it when I was older and, and, collect, and kept those dreadlocks knowing that I would be using them in a piece. And I think that hair is an incredibly political thing right now. Uh, and it, I feel like it's always been political in um, the black landscape if you will, and I, I just wanted to utilize a, that in a piece because I, I feel like it's, it speaks volumes without actually saying, using much. And I also use my hair in this piece right here, but in a different form, uh, so as, a, as opposed to the dreadlock form, and this is just um, natural hair shedding that I collected over the course of a year um, from my shower, which is why no one likes sharing a shower. <laughs> I just started my MFA program here at UNC Chapel Hill. I'm uh, incredibly excited for it. I think it's going to be incredibly uh, challenging. Uh, I'm hoping to gain out of the experience a more concrete uh, understanding of art and my specific practice in the greater art landscape. I'm also hoping to gain skills of uh, more conceptual skills, so having uh, forethought of concept before just jumping in. I feel like my natural inclination is to work very intuitively, and I think it would be very uh, beneficial to think more conceptually first, and then think uh, practically, in, in an essence. Um, I, the program at UNC Chapel Hill is also, um, has a secondary goal of teaching, and I, I, I hope to find a future in teaching as well. For the past year here at Frank, I've been the emerging artist, which has been an incredible opportunity. I feel like I was very nervous moving to the South for the first time. I honestly thought that I wouldn't be able to fit in or feel safe at any point, but I was actually able to find an artist community the first month that I moved here, and I walked into Frank with my parents, I think like a month after I moved, and they were incredibly welcoming. They introduced me to the emerging artist program, and I felt like that was the it was meant to be, it felt very um, symbiotic in that way. And it's been a uh, great experience in terms of learning the art installation process from, from start to finish, what kind of work goes into curating a show, uh, which has been uh, something that I did, I only saw like a glimpse of it undergrad, so it was good to see it practiced by real artists in real life. Um, I feel like from what I've gotten from Frank is a sense of, so my most current work, which isn't at Frank right now, has been a much more organic experience, and I think that's just from experiencing the artist here and their approach to art, um, which a lot of the forms that you'll see in Frank are very organic um, and less structured and geometric, like the pieces that I have presented at Frank recently. Um, so that's been, a, 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 in terms of influencing my work itself, that's what Frank has done. And it's also just really comforting to know that there's uh, that there there are artists that are, are living and working in the local area, and uh, yeah, that's just very encouraging. Uh, our artists that have inspired me the most, and causes that have also inspired my work, have evolved over time. So again, when I started my art career, it was definitely the teachings of Joseph Elbers that I was obsessed with, and that's what I 
followed most closely, so you'll see a lot of Elper's influence in a lot of my work. And then that kind of transformed. I happened to watch a documentary about Ai Weiwei while I was in North Carolina, and then I started thinking about what my space is as an artist in the South uh, with the color of my skin. So I really wanted to um, speak more to uh, making, affecting change. And so that's when I kind of, my art kind of shifted perspective uh, into being a bit more uh, political or a little bit, uh, just more addressing things that uh, my art shifted into addressing things that concern many people in America. And I think that given the platform that I have through Frank and, and other organizations that are trying to raise voices, I think that I have a responsibility to try my best to, to put a voice forward that, that is representative of, of something greater than myself. Um, so, you know, the pieces that speak to race ha were initially, and in my life in general, I, I always remember when I was in undergraduate school and um, the death or murder of, of, of Trayvon Martin. And that affected me an incredible amount because I was of a similar age, I looked very similar, and then I just saw that as a, 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 that was the first time in my life that I actually had to consider my own place in society. And you know, in Maine, it's very separated from much of the history and much of the, the violence, but it's, it's still something that I have to deal with as a, being an American. So that's what kind of motivated me to stop being timid about, uh, stop being timid about speaking about larger subjects. So, so the pieces behind me here are uh, having to do with, with something I like to call American nonsense, uh, which is basically my style in a nutshell. And uh, it speaks to a history that we, again, try to forget. So. I actually used the actual U.S. currency in this piece and represented the, instead of the numbers of the dollar amount, I wrote over it with Sharpie um, the, um, the number of slaves that President had, <laughs> or the number of people that President enslaved. So you can see George Washington 317, um, Thomas Jefferson over 600, um, and, and so on. And then it's paired with this other piece um, again, a different type of American nonsense, which is um, plastic. And I actually found this when I was browsing a Home Depot. So it's, it's a very commercialized uh, representation of what America is. These pieces in the front of the gallery are more related to the current wave of uh, BLM and the, you know, the, the protests that have sparked from uh, the murders of, of countless people, of, uh, specifically George Floyd and, and Breonna Taylor. Um, so these pieces, um, these pieces I've been calling my tiny ass protests. So I was inspired by protest signs that you've seen around America today, um, and the proceeds to these will, will, will go to the uh, bailout fund in Durham for everyone that uh, needs assistance with that. Uh, needs assistance with that uh, racially biased system that I won't get into. But that's one way that I'm trying to support the cause in in, in a way that is in a way that is comfortable to me, <laughs> which uh, other people have different comfort levels and I, I respect them so infinitely for that. Um, and then this piece is a piece that is has to do with my latest uh, thoughts around art, which have to do with accessibility and history. So I remember my earliest memories of actually creating and working art was with an after-school program that I was part of, um, and we used to use these little meltable beads, their crafting bead called Perler, that you use like an iron and you melt them down, and, and that was kind of the first time I created stuff. So I just was trying to make even the materiality of the work accessible, so all of this piece is made of complete, like, completely plastic still, and it's Perler bead and um, plastic thread. <laughs> and, there's actually a text that you can read if you uh, look very closely that I created out of the Perler beads, and it speaks. Uh, it's um, it's something that I discovered in North Carolina uh, doing research, and it's called a slave advertisement. So 
in the past when enslaved people ran away from uh, the people that were um, restraining them. Uh, the, the, they, the, the uh, I don't want to say slave owner, but the, yes, I will, um, would put out advertisements to try to collect their, uh, the people that they enslaved. And so this actually details uh, a specific slave advertisement from uh, a, a young woman that ran away named Oni Judge, um, and she actually um, ran away from the compound that was owned by George Washington. Um, so it's these moments in history that I'm absolutely fascinated about because we um, we really put George Washington and, and, and other founding fathers in such a pedestal, and and it I feel like. When we do that, we kind of brush under the rugs the, the things that they were um, guilty of, <laughs> if you will. And this is something that I think uh, I'm wanting to bring out in work, just just a, a new type of history and, and trying to represent things that, you know, the, the past in history isn't, wasn't the best for everyone in America, and, and I, I don't think we should, we should brush on the rug and I think I make it in a very vibrant color to be a little bit more approachable. It's such a heavy time.